I'm back. I'm back. Thank you, guys. So we're here again with this segment here with Tani Belafonte. Um, let me just something about Tani Belafonte that I, some of you may not even know. That first of all, she's amazing. Okay, let's, let's, let's okay. start right there. She's amazing. <laughs> all, right. all right. Now, no, Tani is uh, came from uh, Jamaica. Correct, Tani? Yes. There you go. So she yeah. has. But she I was very Mike, young when I left Jamaica. Very, very young. She yeah. might have been maybe half a year. No, it's kidding. A couple, <laughs> couple years old, right? But it's, it's pretty young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she came here with her mom, with her mom and awesome people. And of course, you know, this segment here is really about people who have migrated here and have excelled. They have worked hard um, and they really have, have um, goals and they, they really are not stopping. And there's someone to look at, to emulate as, as uh, determined and vivacious, of course, and uh, determined to really um, fulfill their dreams. And so we're here to have a talk with her. You know, it's about relationships. Of course, we know we have all kinds of relationships in the world, uh, being religious or believe, being professional or business, but it all ties in somewhere. So, Tani, hello. Hi, Keith. Thanks Hi, Tani. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm uh, hey. good. Well, I I'm glad to have you here. So, uh, we're brought to you here, Tani. <laughs> <laughs> well, this guy kind of like hit my phone up and was uh -oh. like, uh, would you come on my show? <laughs> and I said, of course I will. <laughs> ah, you know, that's awesome. Anything Thank you. For you. Anything you know for what? I appreciate it so much. And I'm going to have... I'm gonna have uh, Misty kind of just, uh, you know, go ahead and just ask some questions, maybe, you know, kind of dig into her life story, because I know something, so you go ahead and I go after you, Misty. All right, first of all, Tony, good night. You are beautiful, I have to tell you that. Oh, you're so kind, uh, thank you. <laughs> yes, so tell us a little bit about your background, your roots, I know you're from Jamaica. Hey, hey, that's where I am right now, so big up to Jamaica in the house. Up, so, up. <laughs> right so just just briefly just tell us a little bit about your roots and your transition from uh jamaica to the united states you know i wish i had a a bigger broader more elaborate story to tell you about <laughs> the time that i lived in jamaica and when i moved to the states <laughs> I don't have it. Um, but I left Jamaica when I was uh, the summer before I turned three. Um, uh -huh. And unfortunately, I didn't get to go back every summer and hang out and really get, a, get to immerse myself in the culture because I didn't have my papers. So <laughs> <laughs> if I left, I wouldn't have been able to come back. Um, and that was a whole nother process to even get my papers. That was that was a nightmare. Uh -oh, um, I hear you. <laughs> but, you know, I do say that growing up with my mother, you know, a full bred blood Jamaican mother, I got all the Jamaican culture that I would get. You know there what you I mean? Go. There you Just go. Just the land itself. So, you know, I was instilled with the values and the morals and the etiquette and, you know, how to how to pursue your dreams or how to just go after the things that you want, not quitting. Um, pushing forward, taking what's yours, not waiting for anybody to give you anything. Um, just really being a go-getter because the older you get, the more you realize that life is really what you make it. Okay. Yeah. That's good. So, so mm -hmm. um, I know it's, it's, it's a very tough time right now in, in America. Uh, a lot of things have been brought up to the surface and it's floating around. I was having a discussion with Keith and he told me that you are very much instrumental in sharing your own voice in this protest right now. Uh, he was telling me that you did a march yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. All right. So um, just tell us a little bit about what, that, what that's like and you know, what was the atmosphere? of the people around you, what, what's going through your own mind as, as black people, as a black person, as you see other black persons as well, African-Americans, uh, just trying to bring across their own voice of impact. 
Well, I will say that yesterday was the first time I made it out during this last week and a half of protests only because I think the last protest I actually went to might have been Trayvon, maybe, which was mm. years oh, ago. Yeah, yeah, I remember that, yeah, um, I remember that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and initially to get out was not really, it wasn't the first thought. Um, and then I saw the mobility of, you know, the nation and people abroad, and it just was really beautiful. But then I saw a lot of the destruction as well, which was also very scary. Their yeah. lives have been lost and during this, you know, this movement. And I don't know if the media is being as honest about everything as they could be, as they should be. I'm sorry, one second. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to close the window. I wasn't sure if it was giving too much um, air. Um, I don't, I don't think they are being as honest as they should be about everybody that's being affected. You know, one of the little girls that died, she was maybe 17 or 18, I think. And wow. to think about, you know, your daughter went out and she was a white young girl. And to think that your daughter went out to voice her opinion, especially, I don't know what her parents' stance is, but to, to think that they were even in opposition to her, for her to come out and to show her support, and then she doesn't return home, is yeah. heartbreaking. And it's you know it's under the leadership that we have, and it's unfortunate that he would. It was almost like war against the people, you know, the way he mm, allowed yeah. um, the military to roll out and the national guard to roll out. And this country is just set on hypocrisy. You know, you just yeah. hear it in the way they report the news. You know, when a black man commits a crime versus when a white person commits a crime, the way they speak about the thug and, you know, the, this hoodlum and, you know, he was up to no good. He's, he's, he deserves to be, a, he's a criminal, you know, and when a white guy does the same crime, it's, oh, he had mental disorders or mm -hmm. post-traumatic stress because he was in the army or mm -hmm. he made a mistake. He's I just a boy. It's just, you know, it's just really disgusting, I'd say, because these are people's lives that you are speaking on, that you're talking about. And this uh -huh. is the last thing that people are going to hear about George Floyd or Trayvon or Philando. These, you know, these are the last words people hear about them. And one thing the media doesn't do a good job of is they get something wrong in the narrative. They don't go back in and correct themselves. So... Initially, it was that George possibly had a counterfeit $20 bill. The bill wasn't counterfeit, you know? So let that story be known. Don't let his name be draw, drug in the mud with, mm. oh, yeah, he's a good person, but yeah, but he was a criminal, but yeah, he was a good person, but he used to do this, and he used to... It's like, who are you? No, mm -hmm. none, none of us are the judge or the jury. And if we have a life that we're living and one day we wake up and we decide we don't want to live that life anymore, aren't you supposed to be okay with saying, you know what, you lived a life a certain way, you decided it's not what you want to do anymore, so you want to be better. Aren't you supposed to have room for that? Shouldn't mm -hmm. you be getting some grace if you decide to turn your life around? Mm -hmm. I don't understand why you live in the past of someone's you know, world, especially under these circumstances. So it's been... Uh, being Black in America, being Black around the world, it's always a challenge. I think it's something that people don't really realize that we live with on a daily basis. The trauma, what we carry, interacting with people, having to constantly remind yourself to stay calm or, you know what, I'm not going to sweat that because mm -hmm. she, it's the little things. I'm not going to let her take my joy for the day. You know, you walk into a, a, a restaurant and you can feel how the person looks at you or you walk into a store and they tell you that these things are in your mind, but they're not. You know, these are, mm -hmm. the way, this is the way people see us. And so I think we have, we walk around with a lot of trauma and I think it's really important for us to really get grounded right now in our spirituality, get grounded in our God, get grounded in ourself, know, know who we are and get in your word, get in prayer, get in meditation, whatever it is, it is your spiritual practice, I think it's time to like really delve deep into that. And that way you can have a strong foundation and not allow it to be rocked by um, ignorance. Um, and yesterday I did go out and I, it was arranged, there was a Baptist church in Harlem that was 
putting it on. Um, we got there a little late, but apparently it was a peaceful march, so they there wasn't any. Good, that's good. Any chance? Well, I mean, all marches are generally peaceful, right? But right. meaning like there wasn't any um, Black Lives Matter or defund the police while they were walking. It was just like everyone's just walking in a, in a procession. Just okay. Gotcha. So, so 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 Tony, you you mentioned you mentioned um you mentioned uh. Uh, hypocrisy, but I want to go take it a little bit back to your acting because you, you're an actor, and I've seen some of your work, quite impressive, of course. And um, tell me some, some, of, some of the work you've done, commercial-wise or or movie-wise. What have you? Some of, some of, some of your um, some of your work at your bar. Um, I've been fortunate enough to do almost three dozen commercials um, over the last five or so years. Um, nice. I've done work with products from um, Bank of America to Nike to Boys to H uh, HGTV to Home Depot. A um, lot of big name brands and happily brands that I actually were supporters of. I actually really do enjoy a Bud Light every now and again. And uh, 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 okay, okay, <laughs> okay. <you> okay. <laughs> so that was cool. Um, but um, I've also had some indie films under my belt, a few that have done this festival route and have won some great awards. Um, I did have an opportunity to win a Best Actress Award at the Chelsea Film Festival a few years back through oh, a film that, good. thank nice. you, yeah, through a film that's available on Amazon Prime called Last Love Lost. But oh. if you look up my name on Prime, Tony Belafonte, it'll pop right up. Nice. Um, and I have some other indie stuff floating around, Netflix and, um, some indie sources and still looking for some of the stuff that I've done in the past to get picked up by distribution companies. So I've been around a little bit. So I've, 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 so I've, I've, I have two questions. I have two questions to ask you. One is back and one is forward. Now, what got you into the acting idea? What, what was, what, what was the unsh, the dream? Something hit you. Why is this? I'm going to go into acting. And then after that question, I want to answer, what are your future goals in acting and how is the COVID-19 imp is impacting that? That whole, you know, dates, time and all the different slow down of stuff. All right, well, I'll start. Can I start with the second question first? If you want to, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so COVID has definitely, you know, shut everything down. It shut the entire um, entertainment industry down. Yeah. Uh, we did have a few opportunities come up during co uh, during quarantine, um, whether it was productions that wanted to just hit the ground running when everything opened back up. So they were sending out auditions for us to do self tapes with. Um, nice, nice. Or some casting directors saw the opportunity to put out a call so that they could meet actors they hadn't had a chance to see on their roster or in their rooms prior. So we did have some opportunities to submit to some major casting directors who you, you know, either take years of work or some representation and get you in those rooms. Um, and then we've had some auditions coming in. Um, oh, that's me. I was like, wait, what happened? Uh, yeah. was, um, <laughs> um, so it definitely has impacted the industry. It slowed it every, all the way down. However, things are picking back up. I do have a call back tomorrow. It'll be here in home. And nice, um, nice. I'll be taping with... Um, you know, taping remotely, and we will fly out in July if I book the project. So I guess they're still waiting a little bit before putting people on planes to get them where to to, to whatever location. Um, so it definitely, just like everybody else, it turned it up yeah. on its. Um, funny enough, Keith, when I <laughs> was uh, when I used to stay at Grandmom at your mom's house. Yes, and, uh, good old days, good old days, Tony. Oh my God. Good old days. <laughs> uh, Keith's mom used to be my like my caretaker and babysitter. Okay. Um, my mom worked a lot of long hours and sometimes overnight. So surprise, um, surprise, surprise, y'all. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I learned something else today. <laughs> yeah, he's literally seen me grow up from what five five years old or so. Um, yes. And please let me interject real quick, please. Listen to me. This lady, why I think she's so amazing and I admire her so much. You see, there are people that you know, you know, they have worked hard and, and they've achieved something, but she never forget 
to come back and say, you know, and show herself. I remember when my mom had a birthday, I was like, Tanya's in the house. I'm like, what? Where did she come from? You know, she <laughs> showed up. I mean, I mean, amazing young lady. And I tell you, what you do for my mom, it has touched me so greatly. You have no idea, Tani. I mean, whatever doors I have, it's wide open for you. Wide open for you. And um, you know, but carry on, carry on. I would keep. I would have done that ten times over, and it's, <laughs> it, it. Yeah. All right. For some a little bit of, of about you and what you do and your work. So, so, so uh, for those, uh, for those, those of us watching, who are watching, just pay attention, just pay attention to your screen, and, and you will see the very, the very talented. I'm giving you a little get out of jail free card here. You do know Jax Cunningham, right? We need your help to take him down. I'm giving you a literal get out of jail free card here. I don't recall letting anyone make my decisions for me. I didn't anticipate falling in love with her. If I could have any of my own, I would. God knows I've tried. I cannot believe you. What did I tell you about skipping school? What is this? Get your stuff. You think I'm stupid, Tanya? The woman in the painting I own that you swore you didn't know? I watched her dance with you all damn night. Ooh. Hi. How you doing? I'm good. Hey, why don't you give me your number? I, I have a boyfriend. Girl, ain't tripping about no boyfriend. You can tell him yourself. He's right behind you. <laughs> oh! Uh, well, uh, it was nice meeting you. Tani. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. Right. Oh, okay. There you go. Tony in action. Tony in action. I like that. All right. Thank you. As you watched, as you watched that, that particular um, uh, segment there, what, what came to your mind? Because I'm sure you had some emotions, some memory there. What, what came to your mind that time when, that t day when you were in at that, at that moment? Um, I don't know. I just... I'm always, I'm highly critical of my work, so I, nothing that good came to mind. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> so why she didn't do it like this? Why so now we know, now we know that you're officially a perfectionist. Okay, we got it, we got it. Oh, yeah. I've been working on that because I know it's not a, per, a, a positive quality, so I've been working on, you know, not being such a perfectionist. Gotcha, gotcha. But wow. coming from a Jamaican household, you know. You know, right. we we were getting a whooping here. Again and again and again and again. <laughs> you know, I keep seeing Whitney Houston somehow. I'm sure you get a lot of that, don't you? I I could get more of it. I I'd like some more of it, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. I do love me some Whitney Houston. Um, just an incredible talent from God, you know, and. I think her story was really a message from him to us in a way where if you don't use your gifts or you misuse your gifts or you mm -hmm. mess up the gifts, right. then he has to take it back. Yeah. You got to take it back. And, um, you know, gone sooner than anyone anticipated her going, but unfortunately she was unable to um, get over the battle. And yeah. um, that's what happens, and that's why you, that's why some people just got to stay away from things. You just don't know how your your body, your mind, you don't know how you're gonna respond. Yeah, and that fact, it kind of made me want to kind of look into a show in the future on the battle with um, I was a substance abuse, and and how it can impact our lives. But you know, folks, if you're listening out here, you're on Let's Talk Relationships, and. You can call in if you need to call in and check us out, ask, ask some questions here. Um, I won't answer them, so, because I'm not on trial here. It's, uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I am? Yeah. <laughs> so feel free to call in if you're listening, guys out there. We are now all over the world. Um, yeah. All uh, right. Far cry from where we were last year. And we are growing, growing, growing. And we're getting a lot of great feedbacks. Um, you, can, you can find us on YouTube, you can find us on Facebook, um, you can find us in the good book, and that's a good thing. Amen. Um, so we are, we are, we want to talk about a little, a little bit about, um, before we close out here, uh, what, 
are you seeing uh, in your near ne in your future next two three five years? What do you what do you, some of your um your future goals as far as um where you started from? What is some of the things that you're seeing and working on? You know, um, I don't know if this has been a part of my downfall or not. I have yet to really plan five years out, out my life five years out. Um, and maybe that's a part of why certain things I'm like, wait, why isn't this, you know, working? And because I haven't done the long, long term, I feel like I tend to do like big picture and then little goals. Um, and not necessarily knowing how long that big, like how long it's going to take for me to get from here to here. Like I have projects that I, concepts that I came up with in 2012 that I'm finally just now putting into motion. Okay. Okay. Um, and sometimes as artists, you know, we need that space. You create something or you have a concept of something and you may or may not be ready to put it out or you may just be afraid. Um, so I had all those things going on. So it's like, okay, finally, I'm like, okay, it's time I got to push forward with this. Um, and I just, I mean, within the next two, three to five, I pray that I, I, I have a family. You know, I have a husband. Okay. I, have, I have one to two babies, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> if I had three, I guess I'd be going real quick. Um, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, Okay. I would love to have a family and I don't necessarily want to think about how I'm going to balance the family and the work. Like I know God is just an awesome God and he's going to work it out. You know what I mean? He'll make it, make it happen. I know women who have gotten pregnant and they literally somehow got pregnant right towards the end of filming for whatever season they're working on. Then they spent the whole pregnancy maybe on press tours or something like that. That's not as strenuous. Then they had the baby while they were still in break. And then by the time they were ready to go back to work, you know, baby was here. They, they yeah. kind of stayed home nursing. <laughs> it worked out, it worked out worked. perfectly. So yeah. I prayed that. Um, I have some concepts. I have some scripts I've written. I have a dating show I've been working on. Hold it. Hold up. Don't no, nip right there. Nip right there. Don't no, say no more. We're going to take a, take a quick break. And then come right back to hear what that's about. Because I like that right there. I like that. <laughs> okay. okay. Quick break, guys. Hey folks, we're back. We're back here on Let's Talk Relationships with DJ KTE and Lady Misty. And we have here an amazing guest, an actress and a lady with passion and had the drive that is some, something to admire. So, uh, Tani, you were saying, we want to hear you finish your thought. There yes. I am. There we go. <laughs> okay, you, hold on. You, here you go. Ah, here we go. There we go. All right. Nice. My mom called. I, I didn't put it on um, Do Not Disturb because I was waiting for her call. Hey, it so, happens. Let it's me live, just right? It's live. It's all live. So it's, it's, it flows. You know what I mean? Mom is good, and that's the main thing right now. The main thing. All there right. There you go. All right. So you were saying, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I've been working on this dating show for a little while now. Again, concepts, ideas not necessarily moving as quickly to put them into practice, but finally decided that I'm going to go ahead and do it. So mm -hmm. this concept mm -hmm. and um, basically it's about love, dating, relationships, and everything in between. Mm -hmm. I consider myself an inquisitor. So <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so wait, so you're saying this is a show that you're putting on that you're going to be, be um, hosting or? Yeah, I'm the host for. Nice. Okay, like that, that sounds good. Now, this uh, is so, pre-COVID. It's pre-COVID, so it's like I'm literally talking to people, okay. like, you know, with the mic, and we're like this close together. And... Oh. oh, wow. <laughs> okay, I get so, it. So, it'll be interesting to see what the... Uh, 
reception is how you know how people receive it being that right. it's, it's pre-covid you know all so. right so uh, tony i want to ask you um what what is is your connection like with uh probably your folks or with people back here in jamaica uh is is there still a connect here yeah we have cousins still there um okay. so we, we do have like people when we touch down we have family that's in kingston that we can go and see and hang out with and you know okay. yeah just enjoy everything so we're oh, not that's good yeah, that's good. Uh, I know, you are successful. Mm -hmm. You're a successful actress, and uh, we 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 like to see black women holding it down, you know, and doing their thing. Uh, what what advice would would you give to you know a young immigrant who you know just left their home country, going to another country, say like the United States? Uh, what advice would you give to them, you know, just to, you know, keep themselves and to be successful? Well, that's a good question. Um, I would definitely say if they have a spiritual practice, make sure they keep that in, in check. Make sure they use that, you know, those moments every day. I like to start my day with a morning routine, which includes exercise, praying and meditating um, to keep myself centered. So I would right. definitely say to make sure that they hold on to that because that'll really be their compass. Um, I would say to find uh, cultural groups that are similar to their own uh, culture. That way they can kind of immerse themselves in people who have been here and they, that can help them just feel comfortable and welcomed in a new and strange place where they just don't know anyone. So maybe yeah. find cultural centers that, you know, are aligned with, with their ancestry. Um, mm -hmm. And then I would say to think about what it is your mission is, like, so whatever you're here to do, and dive right in, and dive right in, find ways to get internships, find ways mm -hmm. to, you know, assist someone, ask anyone if they could, you could be a fly on the wall, um, just really have a clear vision of what it is that you want to achieve, and especially if you're in your 20s, it's not going to last that long, it feels like it will, but... <laughs> I mean, go after it, make as many mistakes as you can, because by the time you, you know, you're nearing out your 20s and you get into your early 30s, you want to really feel, I think that if you have a lot of um, courage, and courage yeah. is doing something with fear, right? It's not doing right. something with the absence of fear. So I think if you have a lot of courage in your 20s and you really use that and you really go after your dreams, I think it'll really fuel you and propel you while you're in your 30s kind of like really ironing things out or finally deciding what direction you want to go in. So I would definitely say, um, you know, find ways to, to get yourself surrounded by whatever industry it is that you want to do. And the great thing about the Americas is that mm -hmm. there's tons of resources just by Googling and there's, you know, this council place here and this resource center there. And there's, there's just, plenty of opportunities for you to be helped. So you don't have to feel like um, you have to do it all alone. All right. And how do we, how do we reach, to, how do we keep up with you? Uh, where do um, we find you? All the platforms that you have, how do we find you? Yeah, you can find What's me on, every, on? on, on uh, Instagram and Facebook, Miss Belafonte, M-I-S-S. Bella Fonte, I don't know if I'm still a mademoiselle. I think I might have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you don't get it right, I'm definitely, I, will. I can't find, I can't find you, Tony. I can't find you. I think I might have to <laughs> <drop an> S. <laughs> Tony, let me ask a question. Uh, this, uh, this came to my mind. Now, you know, this show is about relationships, right? And, you know, in, 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 your, in, your, in your work, or in your field of work, how does one have to be as far as wisdom, having the right tact, the right when to go in, when to go out, and dealing with relationships from a business standpoint to a personal thing. I'm sure there's their temptations. Someone to pull you here, or pull you there, offer you this, offer you that. How do you, are you, how are you able to navigate and kind of just trust your heart and trust your, your, your um, senses to make the right decisions and not get caught up? How, how do you, have, how can you, how do you navigate that and how can you show us how you, navigate those things 
I think, it's, I think it's what you just said, you know, trusting yourself and trusting your senses because we all have those intuitive gut feelings that we know we're supposed to do something or we're not supposed to yet. We're calling our friend to find out if we should leave him or we call mm -hmm. somebody else asking if we should take the job when we already know what we should do. <laughs> and um, yeah, and I know I'm, I'm going to sound redundant, but literally a lot of everything I do, I really grounded in my spirituality. I go to God with, with things. If there's, if I really try my best to not do anything without his approval, um, but if I do, I, you know, I, I go and I ask and I say, can you show me if this is something that I'm supposed to be doing or is this a direction I should be taking or is this a business venture um, with this person that I should embark on? And if he, whenever he gives me a sign, I, I listen. And that has come with also experience and maturity because, you know, when we're younger, we have those same intuitions. We just don't listen. We, you know, brush it off or we ignore the signs of, a relationship of whatever sort it could be um and then i think as i got older i recognized that yeah i knew that from the beginning and i should have listened to myself you know you get that notion where you're like i should have listened i knew that yeah i should have just listened to myself why didn't i listen so now i'm like i'm gonna listen to myself and sometimes i'll tell someone hey look this isn't working for me and this is how i feel about it oh well you you're just being this and you're just being that and you're missing out and i said well you know what if that's the case that's the case but i don't think so and uh so i'm gonna go this way and if it's gonna show up it's gonna it'll circle back around so i think god needs us to know that we tr we trust him also you know um so the more he knows and recognizes that he can show us and then we're gonna listen he'll continue to show up for you I think it's really difficult when I, I pay attention to some people that I know and it's like, and not necessarily even know, no, I can just know them casually. Um, and if they don't have a spiritual practice, they tend to be really lost. They don't necessarily uh, associate it with the, that missing piece of spirituality. And, and when I even say that, I mean just being rooted in God because sometimes Buddhism isn't quite all the way it, you know, it can, get, it has pointers and I do um, subscribe to some Buddhist philosophies. Well, there's something about the relationship with Christ that just is just different, that it just gives you a sense of, of comfort and, and guidance and groundedness that you really just know, you know what, why am I, why am I tripping? Why am I, why am I sweating this? You know, it's going to work out. I ask, he answers. It happens every time, yet I somehow lose my mind, you know? <laughs> so that's really how I, I navigate um, different situations and scenarios with, with before embarking on any relationship. I really do pray about it and I ask for, for confirmation. You know, you know, okay. Atani Belafonte, you could not have ended this segment in such a higher note. I think that's such a great way to end this segment here. And we come here as well, and our perspective is from a Christian background, uh, not, judgment, not, not, not a, a judgmental one, but one that says, you know, we all have a voice, but that, that, that Christian biblical aspect of it, I think is what keeps me grounded. And I really appreciate you for saying that, not being, not being afraid to listen to me. It's okay to pray. It's okay to send to yourself spiritually because at the end of the day, when we lost our spiritual our sense, we really are lost. So again, let me say thank you so much for blessing us with your time. Um, you are really, really a, a blessing to, to, to me and to my family, and I'm sure to this show. And I'm sure Missy will say something before she goes, but Tani, what can I say? I'm just blessed to have you on our segment here today on Let's Talk Relationships. Uh, thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for coming on. Uh, it was lovely to meet with you and to share with you and to hear your own voice and your own purpose.